Me to come, ain't no crudite, ain't no well. Where's the water? Where's the Perrier? Already? We have boundaries around mm -hmm. it. We found a rhythm. It would, yeah. like that, being in the yeah. same industry, in the music industry, is not easy at all because it's just a very busy industry. But also, when we were starting to work in it together, I was managing Janice. And that's just hard to be yeah. your wife's manager. Conversations that you have to have as a manager to your yeah. client yeah. are not the conversations that a husband ever wants to have with his wife. Yeah. And you gotta watch out for emotions and feelings because you can say something in a meeting that you feel like, yeah, that's this is a hard meeting. But then later it's like, <laughs> and when you, <laughs> you hurt my feelings, right. and so and then we had, I mean, it was everything. We had to decide, okay, boundaries on date nights. Yeah. How do you go on a date night and not talk, not about, talk about work? work? And that's what you would do. You would mm -hmm. go out to dates. You know, husbands and wives go out for dates and they talk about how their day at work was. And if mm -hmm. she's frustrated with her career or something that happened, you know, and she's talking about that at a date, then suddenly the date ain't a date, it's a business it's a, meeting. And now you feel like, and now I gotta fix this and yep. this and this yep. and this. So I learned probably one of the biggest boundaries is if it's work related, I email. Mm -hmm. Yeah, if it's and personal then, stuff, she, she would send a text. Yeah. And that way I wouldn't look at a text yeah. as if it were gonna be about home. Yeah, and, and what's for dinner about, as yeah. opposed to Hey, I was thinking about this and this and this. So yeah, mm -hmm. I email versus text, and then we can decide if we want to talk about it in person. I probably let you bring it up, mm -hmm. so you won't feel overwhelmed. Mm -hmm. Right. But it's also fun. I mean, it's fun yeah. to be at events together it where really we both is. have things to do. I love being called Janice's husband because um, that's just it more. just tickles me. Yeah. Um, and you know, I, I think that you know we get to serve together. And yeah. um, it's just great that we can both be in our purposes mm -hmm. and do our yeah. things in the same space. Yeah, it's so funny. When we met at this math, math and science program, MS Squared, we were two kids who, you know, were smart and we connected because we mm -hmm. love gospel music. So it's fun that that's actually what we do now is mm -hmm. gospel music, the very way we connected. So. Yeah, that's true. Because he was one of the only people who knew about the late, great Oleg the Draper. And the associates, because I used to be in Orlando Draper and the associates on the choir. So the fact that he knew that. Orlando wrote those words. I need to learn those. Sorry, Orlando. I love you. Having a child. Um, you know, challenges the relationship you've settled into, I think, yeah. the habits you've settled into. Because all of a sudden, I think what happens to a woman is that she um, has this love for a person that she's <laughs> not experienced before. And all of a sudden, I think every husband is like, um, hello, do you see me? I'm here. I'm here. Same guy I used to be. And it's just an adjustment to... Um, remind yourself that God made it to be husband and wife first um, and children are blessed through that union and it's just um, it's something honestly I think that's oftentimes harder for a mom to remember because especially if someone has grown in your womb like you are attached to them differently than you've been attached to anyone in your entire life mm -hmm. and so putting that into perspective according to what the Bible says is um, necessary and challenging sometimes because you know moms be wanting to go all in you go all the way if you could i mean it really it but it's also a, a, a maturing process for yeah, husbands absolutely. because you realize it's not about you it cannot all be about you because at the end of the day you can figure out what you need for dinner 
there's like a, an Sometimes. infant that cannot figure out what he's <laughs> or she is going to eat for dinner. And so it's, it's kind of an opportunity for the husband to grow and realize, yeah, you're not just always going to be catered to. And, and Janice is really great about taking care. She loves to figure out ways to make special meals and make something special for me. And then when he came along, after eight years of her doing that, I'm like, you took my wife away from me. <laughs> and, I, and, and as the husband and father, you have to figure out how to live in that tension of realizing you cannot be upset with the child because the child is only symbolic of a change. The child didn't change the things. Mm -hmm. uh, the child represents and caused and required the change. But you can't resent the child for that. Mm -hmm. You got to grow up and yeah. figure out like, yeah, this is what you wanted. This is this is the goal. And God has called you to like yes. train this kid up. And so, yeah, figure out how to do all that at the, at the, at the throne. <laughs> and then, <laughs> the yeah, I think it's the, ma the maturity comes for a wife and a mom to realize this child is especially blessed when their parents' um, <clears throat> relationship is intact. So it's like, I mean, yeah, I could let my marriage fall apart, but then that would be devastating to my child too. So honest, if you really want to love a child well, do all you can um, to maintain a healthy marriage. <laughs> Janice is a nut. What? <laughs> oh, I think that's one of the things I love most about her is that she is actually hilarious. And Janice is the same now as she was when I met her 23, 24 years ago. She is fun loving and quirky and gifted and beautiful and full of energy and a little bit feisty and a little bit saucy. Um, but now it's like been tempered with a little bit of Holy Ghost, a whole <laughs> lot of Holy bit. Ghost. Um, but that's what I love most. And, and honestly, Janice is the one who, you know, we, we say a lot, for the people who are called to be married, it is the way that God uses to sanctify those people. That is the primary tool uh, for those who are called to it. And she sanctifies me. I mean, she really is, you know, she has the saying where she'll sometimes say, can I be a good wife? Um, I'm worried when you said this, that didn't sound like that was really with a kingdom lens or with, a, with an eternal perspective. And no one wants to hear that when they're ranting about somebody that upset them or what they should have known and what I don't like. Can I be a good wife? <laughs> All I know you? is that if I don't, then you'll be out here in these streets looking crazy. <laughs> and I'm not about to have you out here in these streets looking crazy. And I appreciate it. No, I'm not going to do it. Right. I think my favorite thing about you is that you are both one of the smartest and one of the funniest people I know. It's just like, most people know your smart side because they see you at work, but they don't know how funny and silly you are. And it's just so fun. I mean, we have a blast. People think EJ Gaines is one way because you're successful, you're an attorney, and you're a label executive, you run motel. And it's just, they think, they think you are one way. But the reality is, it's like, he's actually a lot of ways. He's so fun and you have no idea. I may start to show that side a bit more. Look at, look at what I'm we got here. Voice of sleep. Yeah. Hallelujah. Crash. Good, now we can catch up on criminal minds. So it. <laughs> All that death and carnage that you don't need that to see. That you don't see. need to see. We can watch some murders. Some murders <laughs> and some psychopaths. Some psychopaths. Some serial killers next door to you. Anyway. To me, the biggest takeaway is communication is key. Mm. It is so, so, so vital. Most recently, when, when we first had Gabriel, um, I remember talking to one of my best friends and I said, you know, I'm just feeling this and I'm feeling this and, you know, I don't even have, know that I have a space to say all that because, you know, how can I say all this? And she's, you know, taking care of him all day and doing this and juggling her music. To all, and I just felt like I didn't have a place to say it. And he said, say it anyway. Mm -hmm. And I was like, what? You're going to get me in trouble. <laughs> um, but what I realized is, and he said, say it anyway, because you, you'd be surprised. You might be feeling a lot of the same things. And so I came home and I, that day and I said, hey, I'm feeling this and I'm feeling this and I don't want to be insensitive and I just needed to say these things. And she said, I'm feeling the exact same things. And it was kind of this moment where we were like, oh. Okay, right, you're my best friend and we're really doing this together and we don't have a solution for these things, but at least we're in it together. And sometimes the communication thing can get so stifled that you don't realize if you would just say it 
and have the conversation, though it may be hard sometimes, it's always gonna be better to talk about some stuff mm -hmm. than it is to bottle it up, to swallow it, to just put it away, because that will only breed resentment mm -hmm. every single time. That's the only outcome that can come of it. I think for me, I would say forgiveness is necessary. Like, people are just people. And just like somebody accidentally steps on your toes, like, it's gonna happen figuratively. And things are gonna happen that in small ways that are going to need forgiving and in big ways that are going to need forgiving and if the lord has called you to be married to a particular person then he saw it all coming and the intent is that you make it out alive and well and so it's kind of like just like when people say don't sweat the small stuff mm -hmm. i think it's that to get married is to be ready to live in forgiveness and live in benefit of the doubt because nobody is perfect period nobody's perfect and you enjoy the people in in your life especially in marriage so much more when you decide to enjoy them i think that's what i would say decide to have fun decide to enjoy the amazing things about the person and why you married them instead of being like oh my gosh she's getting all my nerves it's like <laughs> i mean well yeah any any and everybody would get on anybody's nerves because that's how marriage is set up. So, yeah, forgiveness is key. Yeah. Don't sweat the small stuff and yeah. I think that it can get intense. Yeah, the advice, I, I have two pieces of advice for newlyweds. One, if she's angry, don't get your phone out to videotape her being angry. So you can prove it Because then you'll later. get pizza thrown You'll get pizza thrown at your head. It's a known fact. It's a, it's a known <laughs> fact that to record someone when they are upset with you. And then to say, and then to say look back at the video. I'm a, we're going to look back at this. I'm going to show you how upset you look. And the only thing that happens is this equals pizza, pizza at your thrown head. at your pizza head. Pizza thrown at your head. That's it. That's number one. But number two. <laughs> how do you guys know that? <laughs> I heard about it. Yeah, you know, let's just say. <laughs> let's just say. When you're scrubbing pizza off the wall. <laughs> When you're cleaning up pizza sauce on the wall, you realize you probably shouldn't record probably it. Probably shouldn't have recorded it. <laughs> um, but then the for real advice is everything that you're going through, uh, you are. this is not the first time that someone has gone through it. Yeah. And I think at some point, very, very early on in the first year of marriage, we were probably talking to some friends who were like, oh yeah, that happened with us too. Oh yeah, that happened with And it's like, for real? Why didn't anybody tell us? Like they come to the wedding and they're like, this is the beginning of your lives together. It's love and everyone's gonna be praying for you. And they don't tell you the you annoyances and you're gonna argue and you're gonna fight about this yeah. and bicker about that and this is not gonna be resolved. And if I just had more people saying, that's normal, that happens to everyone. When you think it's supposed to be a honeymoon, for the entire marriage, then at least I would not have felt so much like a failure in the first mm -hmm. year of marriage. It was like, man, I'm really, we really messing this up because we just, we bickering about which way the mug should sit. Should it be face down? Do you turn them down? Or do you turn them up? Now we leave them up. She had her way. I'm of the belief you put them down. The lip should be down. It's neither here nor there at this point. We're 11 years into her way, but I'm just saying. Sound like it had a little something on it, right? He, he wanted to put the mugs down. You can put the I'm mugs turning down. the mugs down today. Tell you what. You put you your mugs your down. Mugs. <laughs> And I'll leave. <laughs> no. That's the other piece. See, that's Marriage is compromised. You and turn that much. It's just like, I'm not fighting you on that. You, you really want to take your shelf and your special mugs and turn them down. <laughs> Go ahead on. <laughs> take out my Have at it. Yeah, I think that would. that's pretty close to my advice, too. It would be like, go in knowing that becoming one is not an easy task. Right. And it, it's impossible for it to be easy. So it's it requires some sort of friction at some point and that's how the lord is sanctifying you and that's how you become one by some friction and that's okay but you definitely need i think what i heard and what you said too is you need some healthy mm -hmm. mature married community couples yeah. in your community to remind you that hey you know figure out how how to argue smart and kindly so that you don't wound each other in that friction because you don't have to wound each other either show now all right guys thank you for thank you for coming to my channel thanks for coming and watching this edition of backstage bonus with my hubby ej Gaines and gaby who's not out thank you for having um, me yeah thanks for coming
I'll come coming. again soon. Just any time. Just let me know. I do need a glam budget. I feel like we'll talk about it offline. I just feel like I need I need people. Budget. Well, I mean, if you're gonna ask me to come, ain't no crudite, ain't no well. Where's the water? Where's the Perrier? Listen, I got you a candle. Oh, no, no I the candle's gone. The candle's gone. I just fruit snacks. Where's I'll my green room? Some fruit snacks. There was no manifest or, pro, or 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 itinerary day sheet of what I was gonna do. So thanks, guys, for coming. Like, make sure comment, you like, subscribe. Sorry. Make sure you like and subscribe down below. Comment, tell me what you think. If you have advice about being married or you have questions, let me know. I'll get to know you down in the comments. And follow me on my socials everywhere at Janice Gaines. And follow me at EJ Gaines. Yeah, follow EJ. He's funny. I'm funny. At EJ Gaines. See you next time.